If you use the Distant Horizons mod, then you're likely aware that one of the only ways to actually get the desired effect out of the mod is to pair it with another mod known as Chunky. By default, Distant Horizons won't actually generate chunks you haven't visited yet, and this leads to some really odd looking effects that just kind of mess up the whole idea of using the mod in the first place. While the mod Chunky allows you to pre-generate chunks in a set radius, so that you get this really nice effect that I have in this world, and it saves you a ton of time and effort from marking down coordinates, and I can instead just look around me or fly up in the sky and see a whole bunch of stuff around me. Uh, the only downside to this mod Chunky is that you cannot use it in a server, or more specifically, you cannot use it in a Minecraft Java realm. If I try and type Chunky, now you can see that the command will turn up red. I'm not actually able to use the Chunky mod or any of its features in a Java realm. And as you can see, I am actually on a server. I'm on a Java realm with another player. I cannot use Chunky, but somehow I was able to generate all of this terrain around me and get the really beautiful effect that Distant Horizons gives you. So in this video, I'm going to show you uh, two workarounds in order to generate your Minecraft Java realm and get this really beautiful effect that Distant Horizons is capable of. So the general idea here is that we want to take a copy of the world we're playing on in the Java realm, move it over to a single player world. Then in that single player world, of course, Chunky will work just as we intend it to. We'll generate all of our chunks there, and then we can move some files around and kind of get our generation back in the Java realm. Um, so method number one, this method is best if you are either A, uh, not the owner of the server, so you're just a friend of the server owner and you want this for your own personal use. Uh, and this method also works just fine if the server just started and there's really not many structures around. Um, what we can do is we can actually go into the world. Uh, I apologize for some background noise if it is raining, um, but in the command box, we can just type slash seed and hit enter. This will bring up a seed box and we can left click to copy this to our clipboard. We can then go ahead and just disconnect from the server. We can go over to our single player worlds and we can just generate, uh, you know, chunky generation, you know, whatever you want to title it. I do recommend playing in creative. It'll just save you some, some pain. Uh, and then paste that seed into the seed generator and create a new world. Now, the obvious downside to this is that if the server is kind of already, you know, if we've already made progress on the server, if structures have been built, if things are around, and I'm going to lag a little bit here as Distant Horizons kicks in, um, then of course you're not actually going to get any of those uh, structures in your chunks. Uh, obviously, as you explore the world and you go to those structures, different things will generate in and, you know, they will be there. Uh, but do be aware that if your server is really far along and there's lots of things in the world, none of those structures or, you know, man-made structures are actually going to generate in with Chunky. Uh, but you could just go ahead and use Chunky. So, you know, you could say Chunky Center, you know, it's zero, zero, It'd be like Chunky uh, Radius. Um, a, a thousand or whatever, and then chunky start. Um, now, oh, okay, I, I, you know, however you got to use the chunky mod, right? Um, but essentially, you would just go ahead and then use chunky as normal here. You could, of course, mark down some coordinates in your world. Like I know that my world isn't really made at spawn. It's kind of off in that direction over there, but you can copy over the seed and then generate your world as desired. Now, the second method, which is the better method if you have structures already built in your world, um, this is going to involve actually downloading the world itself. Now, I believe the only way to do this is if you're the server owner. I don't think there's a way to do this if you are not the server owner. Of course, if you're good friends with the server owner, you could always just ask for the world download, um, but I am the server owner or just the realm owner in this case, so I can download the world. I could generate this one and you would see that um, all of the structures we've built in the world will carry over. So I can go to uh, my Minecraft realms. I can click on the world I want. I'm not going to join it. I'm going to go to configure. Then under world backups, I'm going to click this and I'm going to say download latest. 
So it's going to say my world will be downloaded and added to single player worlds. I'm going to say continue. Uh, it's going to say preparing download. This can take a solid amount of time. So just be patient with it, especially if you have a lot of stuff uh, downloaded already. For example, I am about to download a world that has like 10,000 chunks generated or, or something crazy like that. So this will take quite a while. Um, but I will see you back when this world actually downloads. Okay, so now that the world has actually downloaded to 100%, I can just close out of this tab, head back into our single player worlds, and you'll see that the realm has actually been ported over into my single player worlds. So we'll play this world. Now, uh, one thing you want to be aware of is that you will be stuck in survival, I guess, assuming that this is actually a survival um world that you're playing on although a way to bypass this is that if you go to your pause menu you select open to lan and then you change the game mode to creative and allow commands i actually don't know if this part is needed but you do want to allow commands hit start lan world then you will have access to commands i can say game mode creative i'm now in creative mode and i can go ahead and delete my inventory um uh, but now I can go ahead and generate all the chunks I want. I will actually take you through an example of this because I do want to pre-generate the nether. In this world, as you can tell, I've generated a lot of the overworld. I've generated um, the end. But what I have not generated is the nether, and I have some things on the nether roof that I want to t uh, keep track of. So let's go to the nether and do some chunky generation. Okay, so I've jumped over to the nether roof in this case, and here's the main farm I have in the nether roof. It's a gold farm. However, way off in the distance in a couple of locations, there is a, a hoglin farm and a wither skeleton farm. And so I do want to be able to see both of those farms from my starting point. I do think my shaders will prevent me. Yeah, so actually, you can see I already have enough render distance to see this hoglin farm off in the distance. Um, but way off somewhere in this direction, there should be a wither farm, and I do want to be able to see that as well. So let me pick a little bit of a central location and generate from there. I won't do too many because, again, this is really not the most exciting terrain in the world. Okay, so let's do chunky um, world, right? And I have to say I want to do the nether, chunky center, and I need to pick the... Uh, coordinates I'm sitting at, chunky radius. Um, do be aware, I'm, I'm sure you know this if you use chunky, the larger your radius, uh, you will have much, much slower run times. Uh, this does require quite a strong CPU to like go through all these chunks. I have a decent CPU, but even when I tried to generate 10,000 chunks in the overworld, it still took hours upon hours upon hours. It took almost an entire day. So, um, I, whoa will set my radius to a thousand and then I should be able to say chunky start and you can see well I'm I, my uh, coordinates are in the way but you can see that the the mod is actually going ahead and generating the nether uh, it seems like it's not gonna take too too long so I will sit here uh, wait for this to finish and then I will meet back with you guys and we can uh, go over how to actually transfer the file Okay, now that Chunky has finished generating, we can go ahead and quit out of this world. I kind of just want to see if I did generate enough to see my wither farm. Not sure if I did, but it's not a huge deal. This is just a demonstration. So let's go ahead and quit out of this world, and I'll see you over in the file folders. So the first thing you want to do is navigate over to your Minecraft folder. If you're on the Modrinth app like I am, you can click these three dots and open the folder uh, like so. Uh, you will probably want two of these, so let's go ahead and duplicate this and get a second one for later. Uh, then you want to go ahead and navigate over to your saves folder. Uh, this is where your worlds will be held. Of course, if you did the seed method, you can go in, into whatever world you had saved. I did the copy the entire world over method, so I'll go into this exact folder right here. Then, depending on which uh, dimension you actually generated, you want to go to different folders. Uh, I will assume you're probably doing the overworld, so I'll show you that one first. You want to go into data, and then you're looking for this file right here, distance horizons.squalite. 
I, I don't really know how to say that, uh, but it's going to be the largest file in this one. And of course, if you generated lots and lots of chunks, I know like my file was over seven gigabytes. It was really, really massive. Um, but this is the file you're looking for. So if you wanted to do the overworld, you grab this file. And then if you want to do the nether or the end, you want to use dim one and dim one. Uh, dim dash one is the nether and dim just one is the end. So we'll go into dim dash one, go again into data and we'll take, uh, take this distant horizons dot squite uh, school light file. And you'll see that it is a little larger as opposed to, for example, uh, the end dimension, which will be really, really small because I haven't visited that uh, dimension in my single player world. So we'll go to dim dash one or just the data folder if you're looking for the overworld. Pick this distant horizons.squillite file, then go over to another file folder and go into distant horizons server data. We can open this. Then of course, open the server that you're in. Uh, and then you want to obviously pick the dimension you generated for. So I would assume that you are going to pick the overworld dimension, but I'll go into the nether. And then there should be a squillite file in there. You could just go ahead and either delete it or just copy over the new one and say, replace the file in the destination. This is going to write over a new squillite file, which will have the chunks you generated in your uh, single player world. You can then close both of these folders and start back up your Minecraft world. So if we join back up to the world in which we generated our chunks, you can see I am back on my realm and I have generated extra chunks way off in the distance here. I don't think I generated quite enough to see my wither farm off in the distance, but I will always go back and generate more. I just wanted to do a small amount as an example, uh, but now I have distant horizons working in my nether dimension and working in my overworld and end dimensions. So that's all for this tutorial. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. I will try to address it. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy your newly generated chunks in your Minecraft Java realm.